Well, a lot happened in the Ukraine crisis situation on Saturday. For more on the developing situation, we're joined now by Joe Henning. Thank you so much. A Truman Project fellow and managing director at Open Revolution. We were just listening to our White House reporter talking about the uh, 94 memorandum, and U.S. Senator John McCain referred to this today as well, saying that the Russians are in clear violation of this 94 memorandum and that there could be consequences due to this. What kind of consequences do you think that we could see? Well, I think no question the 1994 Budapest Memorandum is an important document. It does entail uh, obligations by the signatories, the U.S., U.K., uh, Ukraine and Russia to uh, uphold the sovereignty and integrity of, of Ukraine. Uh, it was done uh, in exchange for Ukraine relinquishing its, its nuclear weapons uh, at the end of the Cold War. Uh, that said, I'm not sure it's a controlling document. I don't know that that's going to be a, a decisive document as we think about what happens next. I think what is probably maybe more important right now is the fact you have a de facto occupation of Ukraine already underway, uh, and you have a pan-European security architecture that's in disarray. Uh, I see. Putin saw that coming, and, and, and now we have it in plain view. So Russia says that uh, the people of Crimea asked for his help. Ukraine says that's not the case. Where does the truth lie? Well, as always, it lies certainly somewhere in between. But I think the, the most important fact right now is that you have a country that's in threat. It's, 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 it's disintegrating. Uh, and having a, a country of 46 million people on the immediate periphery of Europe, between Europe and Russia, uh, in, in, in under the threat of uh, total disintegration, serves no one's interest, and it's, it's, uh, we're certainly in uncharted waters. This, this reminds us all of 2008 when uh, the Russians went into Georgia, obviously. Same sort of blueprint here. Communication has been cut off. Uh, flights in and out have been cut off. Um, how was the U.S. caught flat-footed on this? Well, as uh, an American who was caught accidentally in the middle of the war uh, in 2008 in Georgia, uh, I, I can certainly relate to uh, how, how one feels uh, getting caught uh, flat-footed. I think it's difficult to foresee how Russia is going to react in instances like this. In this particular instance, though, there is, there is a, a series of events, uh, I think, from the 2008 Bucharest summit, where it was very clear uh, that alliance politics inside of NATO uh, did not embrace an expansion of strategy. Uh, Russia read that carefully. You had the immediate war uh, in Georgia several months later. I think this is really part of that sequence. And I think without uh, a reason not to intervene, uh, and with what I think we often underestimate to be very strong interests by Putin personally, uh, as well as a lot of the Russian population, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine them stopping. So I think we're, we're, we haven't seen the end. Right. Well, at this point, that is the next question. How do you get Putin to withdraw if, in fact, that, that seems to be the best case scenario? And would the sanctions help? Uh, U.S. President Barack Obama already talking about uh, withdrawing any preparations to go to the G8 in Sochi this summer. Are all these things going to pressure Russia? Or at this point, do you think they'll, they'll be, they really care? Uh, I think they should be done, no, no question. I think the sanctions are important. There are, of course, a lot of economic interest. Uh, Russia is a, a fairly large economy. There are a lot of ways we can leverage interest domestically inside of Russia that way. Uh, I think, uh, no question, uh, there's really no pretense now left for Russia to remain inside of the G8, let alone uh, for anyone to attend the G8 uh, planned summit in Sochi. Uh, that said, uh, I think there's not a whole lot we can do right now to make them withdraw. I think uh, in the broader scheme of things, there were things we could have done in 2008. Um, we have to be realistic about where we are now. We have thousands of Russian forces inside of uh, a neighboring country uh, supporting a uh, separatist region of that country, clearly out to destabilize uh, a nascent government in Kiev and calling it illegitimate. What are the next 48 hours going to be like? Uh, like I said, I think we're in uncharted waters. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, I think we need to find ways to de-escalate. I don't think we have a lot of options. I think what Samantha Power, Ambassador Samantha Power, is doing in the United Nations, calling for some sort of international group, maybe a Friends of Ukraine, uh, a group that pulls in the sovereign powers that have the most to win or lose and can influence things on the ground. I think that's the most realistic option. I think giving some sort of transparency around force movements uh, in 2008, uh, if we had shared more intelligence about where force, forces were and when they were there, I think that could have been very helpful. Maybe it would have given nations pause before they acted. Is this a step forward for Putin politically and then a step back? I mean, he, he did well coming out of the games, and uh, perhaps his image in the world was, was, had been raised somewhat. Does this take him a step back? Oh, it's, 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 it's an enormous step back. I think he had come a long way. I think uh, the, the games came off uh, beautifully, as I think everyone agrees. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine why he would sacrifice all that uh, under these circumstances. That said, for those who followed Russia for, for his tenure, uh, his ability to allow this to happen threatens his regime, the legitimacy of his regime, uh, his vision for the future of Russia. Uh, so I don't think it's something that we should be terribly surprised that he's taking very seriously.
All right, Joe Henning, thank you so much with Open Revolution and Managing Director there and the Truman Fellow Project. We appreciate your time and insight. Thank you so much.